previously you know, been replaced by other building materials. And <coughs> the ones in the Bay Area largely were located on the water so that they could be shipped by boat. The, boat, the bricks in your building came by boat, by barge, and there were no bridges then, right? From here to the Bay. Yeah, yeah and there used to be... Well, we're going to go by a building. I'll show you some old photographs where the scout schooners used to pull up right over here. A lot of this has been filled in now, and there's a hill that used to be here that's gone. And But the kilns that um, fired the bricks used in your building are underneath those two tallest stacks. Those are Hoffman kilns, and they're, they're still there. Haven't been used since, I think, the, the mid-50s. They're, they're coal fire, down. oil. Coal fire. They're, it's funny. They're, um, the coal is still left on top of them from the last day. You know, they just said, "Okay, guys, go home," and they they just fire them up again, switch to a different type. Of huh. And where the coal came from? Like, I don't know. I've wondered Sierra's about that. Or something, or? I, you know, they mine coal in the East Bay. Huh. That was a low quality yeah. coal. But maybe you that that can go see the coal anything, mines you know? in East Bay. Yeah. It's like near Al yeah. up near Antioch in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. So they mine coal there, but. It, uh, I don't know to what extent it was, what, what purpose it was used. They, there are different kinds of coal for different things. Yeah. And certainly that would, would have been the closest. Very cool. So, so okay, yeah, the, the mining used to be a hill over there on the, where the trees are uh, farther than that, and a mile or so away, where uh, for some decades the major mine was, and, the, and this railroad would bring the, core, the ore, the clay, where did the family live back in the day when things first started out? What? Where did the family live? <laughs> what? You know, we had 2,700 acres here. Yeah. So uh, there was a there was a, a state park called McNear Beach. Yeah. And, and that was a, a compound, and there were a lot of houses there. And um, I know that some of my family lived there. Oh, you know what? There's a in that subdivision on the other side of that hill, there remains a really neat old. It was called the ranch house. It's, a, it's kind of a ranch mansion that was my great grandfather's house. <laughs> huh. So that's that's where some of them live. That's very cool. You can go up there and see it if you want. Yeah. Well, on the way out of here, go up Night Drive, and it's on the left. K N I G H T. Yep. Just after Castlewood. All right. Okay. So so nowadays, so bricks used to be a building material, and they strive for perfection. Everything make it uniform, you know. And and now it's just the opposite. Uh, people use brick for aesthetic reasons only and strive for imperfection. At least that's what we do. We make a range of products. Some of our stuff like those those tannish colored ones over there are trying to be perfect, square, uniform in color. But mostly what, what we sell today is the stuff that has variation. It's a, a matching historic bricks and that sort of thing. It's the old look but it's new. Yes, exactly. Strive for imperfection. I like Strive that quote. <laughs> I'm going to put that on our trucks. Yes. Yeah. I like it. And yeah. the other yeah. big thing on that this really affects yeah. you guys all is that the, I can the brick world is changing to thin brick. It's yeah. no longer a thick veneer product. It's Water proofers don't like thin brick. They don't? No. Why? Because you glue them to a precast panel and then you hang them Good. on a building. And you Good. say it's never going to leak. Oh, but yeah. then the panel cracks, and the brick has no way to keep water out. It's too thin. Yeah, it's not your problem. I know. It's my problem. Yeah. 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 Okay. So guys, loading the kiln, that major brick. That's a Hoffman kiln. So they are building the Hoffman kiln. Oh my God. It mentioned in that little thing, that PDF thing that I found, that um, there was already a. An operation here? Yeah. Uh, the Fortan Brick Company. They were on in the same location. How long were they? Was it I don't know. We, um, I mean, we claim our origins as them. So we go, so we go back to 1868 or something like that. And that's, that's how, when they started? Well, that's how long my family owned the property. Got so it. So we figured out ah, they were already there, you know, because we, we don't know. Huh. Who knows? Nobody's around from that time. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. And here's, so, here's some, what, Chinese coolies loading bricks by hand and <laughs> what were those wooden shoes who used those those are recent um, those i don't this is kind of our brick museum but those are not always those are by walking on hot surfaces <laughs> but these Brick molds are they were um, used to make bricks wow brick molds oh yeah look at that you know yeah. okay so 
one of the, our, our uh, this one, this is an old one. Those bricks that we call, um, we, may have, we have a whole series of historic looking bricks called sand molds. And this is a sand mold, an actual uh, thing. When they, they would put wet mud, gooey wet mud into here, and they'd screed off the right. top, and then turn it upside down and thump it on a plank. And I think there's some pictures of uh, somewhere around, maybe, maybe not from the walls, but um, that's, they'd just be planks of bricks laid on it. And, and they're still made this way in other parts of the world today. You see, you know, in Nepal, the, all these, these fields with bricks laying on the ground, they were made with something like this. But sticky mud doesn't want to leave a cavity. Hmm? So they would sprinkle it with sand first mm. as a parting agent, and then put the uh, mud in, and then the bricks would slide out easily. Which changed the look of the brick? Yeah, left yeah. a permanent I sandy think texture. yours are like that, too, I think. Yeah. They've got that kind of indented oh, look sure. on them. Well, you know, yours are may have been extruded. Hmm. Maybe the coins, you know, things were getting mechanized. Uh, but you'll see a lot of historic buildings have a, a distinctive sandy, grainy texture to them, and that's because they were made with a device like this. That's the way they used to do it. Let's see how they did it more oh, here. recently. Here you go. So well, this is a, these are stacks of bricks laying out on planks. They came right out of these things. Yeah. So would one guy do all this? Because this is not yeah. light, yeah. but you can imagine with um, two, four, six, eight, eight yeah. bricks. It was a factory setting. You know, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't, really don't know how it all worked. Yeah. It didn't work out. Okay. So they're just air-drying? Well, initially. Uh, but the glue product, so the brick is dry, you crush it off and make it into sort of a, a clay mud homogenous, and then you add it, the right amount of water. Um, and this is old, this is just you know how it was done then. And then you put it in a mold, and then you dry it. And you have to dry it carefully, because um, clay shrinks when it dries. And if you shrink the outside more than you shrink the inside, you'll crack it. So you have to dry it slowly, carefully, and then after it's dried, it's it's just it's just a dried mud brick, adobe. You know, don't put straw in it. It's actually a, a pretty strong building material, but it's not weatherproof at all. And um, so, where the gray wall was built? Uh, no, the gray wall's got a lot of it's fire clay brick. It's it's real fire clay brick right. there. Um, the Mexicans did a lot of adobe construction. They just put stucco on it, and mm. it works great. Yeah. Mm. So. But for us and for the for the Chinese, after the drying step, you fire them in kilns, and that you, you again have to do it carefully because bricks um, shrink when they get fired. So you want to shrink the outside in about the same rate as you shrink the inside, so they don't crack. And then uh, you fire them high enough. Hey, look, there's your building over there. Uh, <laughs> higher, high enough, high enough, so that. <laughs> They fuse together and become a very strong sort of... It's the exact flyer that I sent you guys yesterday. Yeah. 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 Is that a sales flyer or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it is. From like 1920 something or other. Yeah. yeah. And check out the one underneath it. Don't put that, um, the next building down is the... Uh, Shrine Hospital. The old Shrine Hospital. Shrine Hospital yeah. crypt for crippled children. Yeah. They don't call them that anymore. They <laughs> special needs. Those something. lawsuits are all done and paid now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what they were, right? Crippled children, you know? We oh, can't say that though, Jeff. I'm shocked. My dad went to hospital there. He had a no kidding. You're the yeah. second guy that I met a guy yeah, riding a, bikes at top of Mount Tam. Yeah, his dad. Yeah, that's cool. He was he was spent a lot of his childhood down in there. Oh, that's so neat. Yeah. Yeah. Is it okay if I take a picture of the yeah, picture? Yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I have witnesses. Yeah. He said it was okay. Yeah. Oh. That that's is very a great cool. Shot. So how has this company changed in your lifetime, other than being able to do things with computers and not paper? Uh -huh. All right, in my lifetime, we have changed from firing the brick in field kilns, which are just essentially boxes with permanent three permanent walls. They stack bricks in mm -hmm. and build the fourth wall and stack some bricks on the top and just put in huge amounts of natural gas in both sides, mm -hmm. two sides of them, and fire them for a week and then let wow. them cool off and then and the bricks. And of course you'd have the bottom ones would be over fired, the medium the next layer up would be just right and the top ones would be under fired. It's a really <laughs> primitive way huh. to make bricks. Uh, then we switched to a tunnel kit, which we use today. Okay. And that's a, a more advanced, much less labor intensive, much higher quality return. That's one change. We um, stopped mining. 
Okay, so this is a Hoffman test. And, and then it, it's essentially an oval shaped tunnel. So it goes around and around and around. So it's continuous. We put this in here because the roof is collapsing. We just put some more bricks in there so that it wouldn't fall down any more. So like all the we appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> we need those. <laughs> Go ahead, fall down. <laughs> so the way this would work is it was a continuous process, much like our tunnel kiln. They'd have two teams of men, um, one backing up, stacking bricks, and moving ever backward, and, and then the fire would follow them, and then another team of, of men following the fire, taking away the unfired or the fired bricks, and they would brick up these doorways and unbrick them as necessary to get in here. <laughs> they, you have to brick yourself in. No, no, no. Oh. After, after you were done. And you, oh, see all the openings in the top? Mm -hmm. There was like slots. Oh, I can see oh, them. Oh, you know what? Check out that. See that stick, that big board sticking down? Yeah. That is an old instrument left over from when they were fired. It's a tapered wooden shaft that they would stack the bricks around. And then after the bricks were all stacked around it, they, it was tapered so they could withdraw it. And that would leave a channel for the coal to be dumped into or get the coal all the way down to the bottom. So each of these holes um, was a firing hole, huh. and they, they would dump coal down into them. Huh. And that's one of well, the... How does the fire follow them? You're saying they dump coal? They can, is this loose coal? Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah, well, I mean, once it was going, imagine it just kept going. But yeah, the temperature was so high enough so that it would, it would, it would combust. It didn't... So the flame was just loose? The coal was yeah. just loose? Well, it was a solid brick in here. It was solid brick, right? And so they, you know, this, this layer of coal coal dumped here was four feet higher than the coal dumped there. And it was close enough so that it would, you know, it would combust. Uh -huh. And they, they would control, the, it drafted into the middle, and there's a bunch of damper controls in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and they would, you can see this little sort of mark along there, and you see them like here. area of this of this tunnel and they would use mud, you still see the fired mud to, to attach the paper to it, creating an air barrier so that they would compartmentalize it with these combustible barriers and in this way they can control the airflow. And so they'd have the fresh air coming from that direction where the bricks are already fired. It would go over the fired bricks, cooling the bricks off so the people can heat them up and bringing that temperature, that hot air, that energy into the combustion area so that you had preheated hot gases that would ignite with the coal. And then on this side of the fire, they would have the exhaust gases move through the bricks that were not yet fired. And they would cool off the exhaust gases before they went into the chimneys. And in that way, they would preheat the bricks before the actual fire got there. So it was like a counter, it was, it was an energy efficient process that, you know, the exhaust gases were relatively cool and the bricks produced were relatively cool. So was the fire, uh, was the brick, the sword, the brick that was being kiln dried <laughs> in the middle of the fire? I mean, was the fire? What, what Track was right here, right? That's yeah, all. that's right. It right in the middle. Solid, remember yeah, those pictures, just, remember those pictures we saw in the office, those guys with those yeah, bricks? Yeah. This whole thing was filled with bricks. Each brick had a space like this big around it, right? They were, it, was, it was not stacked like that. That would not work. <laughs> <laughs> this was one busy place back in the day? Oh. Yeah, that's one that was this big. See those, mm. those devices with candles? Because those are the dampers, and that's those lever items oh. for, for raising closed yeah. dampers. Yeah, just like this isn't the price, right? Are you sure this isn't your new technology? <laughs> yeah, okay. This one's committed to the dust of time. But look at this. How many, raise your hand if you've seen the top of a kiln before like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thomas, you're walk, literally walking yeah, in a minefield. I don't know how sturdy it is. Yeah. Here, nobody's worked. There's like one, one guy who would do it. Oh, I got that wrong. This was, you know, the job was there used to be covers over each of these holes. And, you know, as needed, you would take the cover up and scoop out the coal and dump it in there. Crazy. Is this all undulating because it's collapsed? Yes, it's, a, it's just repair. So it's undulating because uh, there used to be steel or iron supports around each hole and you find them and so there's like a collapse underneath because you had backs and stuff. Oh, you know what? Okay, here's an interesting uh, picture. So this chimney here is a landmark for the further step. There are 
there's a type of bird called a Bose Swift. Any of you guys birders? Hear about birds? Oh, yeah. Well, Swifts are a funny uh, bird. They cannot stand on flat ground. Remember, they need to hang on a tree trunk or a cliff or something like that. And they migrate in, in, in big packs, big flocks. And they go up and down the west coast. The Bose Swifts go up and down the west coast. And somewhere along the line, Thank you.